Welcome to Accounting 101 Lesson 1. This is a series of short videos covering the basics of accounting, double entry bookkeeping suitable for any syllabus, AQA, A-level accounting, AAT, Pitman, City and Guilds, whatever it is you're doing, T-levels, BTEC. Um, this is the little series for you that will help get you going with the very basics of accounting. So first session is looking at something called the accounting equation. Our aims and objectives for this session are that by the end of it you'll be able to explain what is meant by the term financial accounting so what are we doing why are we doing it um, we'll be able to differentiate between assets liabilities and owners capital so some important distinctions there and you'll be able to demonstrate how the accounting equation is affected by certain business transactions so what is financial accounting then so we know that accounting is the language of business and it involves recording business transactions in financial terms it involves reporting information to the owner of the business and other interested parties or stakeholders um, and advising the owner and other stakeholders how to use the financial reports to assess past performance and make decisions for the future. So the other type of accounting, the other main type of accounting is management accounting. And whereas financial accounting is concerned with transactions that have happened, historical information, things that are already in the past, management accounting concentrates very much on forecasts and predictions um, for the future. So it's financial accounting that we're interested in uh, at the moment. We're going to be looking at how we can record transactions that have occurred in the business and make some sense out of them. So financial statements then, what does that mean? So the financial statements generally comprise two things. One is the income statement, which you may know as the profit or loss, sorry, profit and loss account. Um, and this is where we take the income of the business, deduct the expenses <clears throat> and work out whether the business has made a profit or a loss. So income is money that the business has earned, so usually from sales, but it might be other things as well. They might receive um, interest on bank deposits, they might rent out part of their premises and receive rent. It's basically any money that's earned. It doesn't include things like money paid in by the owner or money that's been borrowed uh, from a bank. That's uh, categorized differently. Then we've got the expenses, these are the overheads, and then the day-to-day -day running costs of the business. So things that the business has to pay for, but generally it doesn't have much to show for it afterwards. So purchases of goods for resale is one big category, but might be paying wages, electricity bills, rent, motor running costs, anything like that, insurance, just day-to-day -day running costs of the business. So if our income is higher than our expenses, the business has made a profit. <clears throat> but if our expenses are higher than our income, it's made a loss. Okay, so we will talk more about the income statement later on. The other um, page of the financial statements is something called the statement of financial position, which may also be known as the balance sheet. Um, the statement of financial position shows the assets, the liabilities and the capital of the business. And overall, it's showing the net worth of the business. So some definitions here, assets are items that the business owns. So things that the business owns that it uses in the business, whereas liabilities are amounts that the business owes to other people. And capital is the amount that the business is worth. It's the difference between the assets and the liabilities. And it's usually made up, at least initially, of capital money that's been introduced by the owner of the business. So assets, as we said, were items that are owned by the business. So let's look at some categories of assets and some types of assets that might occur in those categories. So the first thing is something called non-current assets. Now, whenever you see the term non-current in the accounts, it means it's going to be around for more than one year. So a non-current asset is something that's bought by the business and that at the time of purchase, the business thinks will be there for more than a year. So we've got non-current liabilities as well. So a non-current liability is an amount that's owned by, um, owed by the business that will be owed for more than a year. So examples of non-current assets, and this isn't an exhaustive list by any means, but things like premises, motor vehicles, computer equipment, um, could be shop fittings. So things like shelving and um, a nice counter in a shop could be all sorts of different things. Um, and it will depend very much on the type of business. So when we talk about premises, it could be a warehouse, it could be a shop, it could be an office block. Um, vehicles could be anything from vans to cars to forklift trucks to little electric vehicles. Um, and computer equipment could be anything from desktop computers to enormous servers, could be anything in between. Current assets, um, by definition, are things that are going to be there for less than a year. So they're generally going to be 
either used or spent um, or converted into cash into another kind of asset um, within 12 months. So these are things that are used in the everyday running of the business. So things like inventory. So inventory is your stock of goods that you're hoping to resell. At the end of the year, you would count that up and that would be the value of your inventory. Another example, something called trade receivables. This is money owed to your business by customers. Um, other examples, cash and money in the bank. So those are all current assets, things that are not likely to hang around for more than 12 months. In terms of liabilities, just a reminder there, these are the amounts that are owed by the business. So we could have in there loans, overdrafts, trade payables, so loans, money that's been borrowed from the bank or another institution. Bank overdrafts, that's where you've got an arrangement with your bank to um, borrow money to spend more than you've got in your bank account, so you can have a negative balance on the, uh, the business's bank account. And trade payables, they're the opposite of trade receivables, so these are suppliers, people that you've bought goods for resale from, that you're going to be paying um, at a later date, so money that's owed to suppliers. And our liabilities, just like with our assets, as I already mentioned, can be either current, due for payment within a year, or they can be non-current, so repayable after more than one year. So something like an overdraft is always going to be a current liability, so overdrafts here, including in the list, um, will always be a current liability because they're only ever negotiated for a period of up to 12 months. Whereas loans could be either, we could have a current liability, a loan that's due for repayment within 12 months, or a non-current liability, one that's due for payment after more than 12 months. And sometimes loans might need to be split between the two. Trade payables, unless we've got some sort of extraordinary relationship with our suppliers, are always going to be a current liability. Generally, you're going to pay your suppliers within 30 days, so <clears throat> you wouldn't expect to see those cropping up as non-current liabilities. Okay, so the accounting equation. Now, this is something that the Statement of Financial Position is built on. So the Statement of Financial Position used to be called the balance sheet, uh, still is under some specifications, um, but it always balances in numerical terms. Um, it balances if you've done it right. The Statement of Financial Position, though, is probably a bit more of an inclusive term there. It gives an idea of the financial position of the business at a fixed date. So this is usually the year end date. And it's based upon the accounting equation, which states that assets minus liabilities always equal capital. So assets, the amounts that the business owns or things that the business owns. Liabilities, things that the business owes. If we deduct one from the other, the net result is the amount of capital. And that's how much the business is worth or how the business has been financed by the owner. And we're going to have a look at a few transactions now and see how those affect the accounting equation. So the dual effect then, and this is what double entry bookkeeping is built on, the idea that every time a financial transaction occurs, two items within the accounts are affected, but the equation will still balance. So the principle of double entry bookkeeping is that every time something happens, you have to identify the two things that have been affected. So have we bought something? If so, what is it we've bought? Um, and how have we paid for it? Has it been paid for from the bank? Has it been paid for by cash? Or is it going to be paid for at a later date? So every single time anything happens, we always have to consider the dual effect. Okay, so we have to remember that assets minus liabilities are always going to equal capital. We can rearrange that equation. So we could say that liabilities, if we add those to capital, that will equal assets or that assets is the total of our liabilities plus our capital. But generally, for our purposes, the accounting equation is going to be assets minus liabilities equals capital. And that's how we're going to structure our statement of financial position when we come to doing that. OK, so let's have a look at some, uh, some transactions and see how they affect the accounting equation. I think we've got four transactions now. The first one being that the owner is introducing £5,000 of their own money which is capital. So capital is the amount of money that the owner has invested in the business. So it could be um, actual money or assets that have been put in by the owner, or it could come about because the business has made profits and those profits belong to the owner. And over time, they will be added to the capital account and build that balance up. But we'll discuss that in more detail later on. So back to this one, then the owner has introduced £5,000 of their own money into the business bank account. So we've got to identify the two things that have been affected. So one is fairly obvious here, the business bank account has received £5,000, so that will increase assets, um, and the owner has put in £5,000 of their own money. So that's going to increase 
the capital. So those are the two accounts that are affected. Um, whereas with number two, we've bought a computer for a thousand pounds. It's been paid for by check from the business bank account. So the two things that are affected here, we've gained a computer, but we've lost money from the business bank account. Number three, the business has taken out a loan, £10,000 loan from the bank, and the money has been paid into the business bank account. So the two accounts that are affected, we've received £10,000 into the business bank account, that will increase our assets, but we now owe, we have a liability, a £10,000 loan from the bank, which will need to be repaid. And then number four, we've bought a van for £8,000 and we've paid for that by cheque from the business bank account. So this time we've gained a van. This is very similar to number two with the computer. We've gained a van costing £8,000, but we've lost £8,000 out of our bank account. So you can see that for number one, if we look at how this is affecting the accounting equation, the assets, the bank account specifically, have gone up by £5,000. There's no liability involved here. We haven't owed any money to anybody, so there's no change in there. But the owner, we're now recording the fact that the owner has put £5,000 of their own money in, so the capital balance in the business books will increase by £5,000. So the accounting equation, assets plus £5,000 minus liabilities, zero, equals £5,000. Okay, number two, the business has bought a computer for £1,000. They've paid by cheque from the business bank account. So we're now adding a computer to our assets column here, but we're taking £1,000 out of the bank. So you can see that now there would only be £4,000 left in the bank account. And that is the double entry, the dual effect, increase the computer account by £1,000, reduce the bank account by £1,000. No change in liabilities, no change in the owner's capital. Okay, number three, the business has borrowed £10,000 from the bank. If you remember, the two accounts we identified here were the loan account, and then because the money has been paid into the business's bank account, that's where the other half of the entry will be. So the bank has increased by the £10,000, where it says money is paid into the business's bank account. We're adding £10,000 there. We've now got a loan. So under liabilities, the business owes £10,000 to the bank. So assets minus liabilities means overall there's no change to the capital. These two things cancel each other out, but the accounting equation is still balancing. It's still been maintained. Number four, we've bought the van for 8,000. We've paid by check from the business bank account. So the two accounts, if you remember, we've bought the van. So the van will increase, the van account will increase by 8,000 pounds, but we're losing 8,000 pounds out of the bank account. So if we look down at number four here, under assets, we've got an increase of £8,000 for the van, £8,000 coming out of the bank account. We haven't borrowed any money, so there's no change to the liabilities. We haven't paid any loans off or anything, so no change there. And it hasn't involved the owner at all. The owner didn't pay for the van. Um, there's been no change in the capital account. So the whole double entry, the dual effect, has occurred under the assets column. We've increased one asset and we've decreased another. Okay, so what we can do now is just check and make sure that the total of the assets minus the total of the liabilities does equal the total of the capital. Okay, so we've, what I've done here is just added up um, the total of the transactions that have gone on here. So adding the 5,000 plus one minus one plus 10 plus eight minus eight, you'll see that overall that's 15,000 pounds in the assets column. Um, we've got liabilities, it was just the £10,000 loan. So if you take that away, then that equals the £5,000 capital, which is showing up in the capital column. And what I've also done is broken down the value of the three assets we've got. So if you recall, we've got two non-current assets, things that are going to be around for more than a year. We bought a van for £8,000 and we bought a computer for £1,000. So we've got a total of £9,000 in non-current assets. And the bank started with 5,000. We paid out 1,000, so that took it down to 4,000. We added 10, making it 14,000, and then we paid out eight. So the bank is now balanced of 6,000 pounds. So if we add the eight plus the six and the one, 15,000 pounds in assets minus the loan equals the capital balance of 5,000 pounds. And that is how the basics of double entry work. So with each transaction that occurs, identify um, you know, which account you need to debit, which account you need to credit, which one's increased, which one's decreased. Um, and I would say that's all there is to it. But obviously, this is just a very simple range of transactions. We haven't dealt with any buying and selling of goods here. Um, we haven't dealt with anything that would affect 
anything in the income statement. So no income, no purchases, no expenses, nothing like that. So this is, you know, kind of, as I said, accounting 101, this is lesson one, very basic stuff. Okay, so hopefully by now you can define and give examples of assets and liabilities, and you may even be able to split those into non-current assets, things that are going to be there for more than a year, current assets, things that will be there for less than a year, and do the same with liabilities. Um, can you remember the accounting equation? So the fact that assets minus liabilities will always equal capital. And then in my next lesson, I'll take you through double entry bookkeeping in the T accounts um, and see what actually happens when the business starts trading. So some slightly more involved examples. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, maybe subscribe to my channel and then you'll get notifications of when I next post. Thanks very much for watching.